What is up and welcome back to another episode of the Fort Men Podcast. I'm so thankful that you're joining us on this lovely Friday or whatever day it is that you happen to be listening to this podcast. Thank you so much for making it your first listen every single morning. Just kidding. It's probably not your first listen, but thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy to have Pastor Earl McClellan in the house with me today. He's not actually in the house. He's in his own house, but I'm in the studio. I wish he was here with me in person, but Earl, I'm so thankful that you're joining me today. Man, you are a um, just an amazing husband, an amazing father. You're the pastor of Shoreline City Church in Texas, and I'm just so grateful that you're here with me today. Fired up to be here, man. Appreciate you so much. Thankful for you. And again, I'm just hoping I can get your biceps. <laughs> I actually have in my notes. I was going to say, I'll give you fin- fitness tips if you help me with my jump shot. <laughs> man i actually have never been a great jump shooter i was a point guard but not like a steph curry point guard i was more like let me just kind of make sure everybody is good i was a lockdown defender that was kind of like my thing to run the team and to shut down the other team's best player yeah could you um could you dunk could yes yes i still can you still can yeah, man. Man, yep. that's awesome. See, I, here's, not, I would, not like I used to. I not like much, I used to. I, I I can dunk everything but a basketball. I have like super small hands. They're like <laughs> super like sh- like they're just chubby. They're like fat and chubby. But I can dunk a football, those volleyball. Are, those I can are the dunk, fattest hands I've ever seen. Can, I've, I've I've seen a lot of hands. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, but I literally can dunk everything but a basketball. So I would say I will give you uh, my biceps if you can give me um, just some <laughs> some of your vertical leap. I would. I, I'll take it. <laughs> Uh, well, I think that's, I'm worth it as long as I don't lose any of my vertical, I, cause I, I need to keep it. Cause that's all I really have right now yeah. is, uh, I, I could dunk a little bit and, and now, now when I'm out there, I'm just rebounding and distributing the basketball, you know, unless I'm playing with my son, then I try to destroy him. <laughs> do you still, do you still play pickup a pretty, a pretty good bit? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be play. Um, matter of fact, my son was just in town this past weekend, uh, on Saturday and, um, there's like this backyard basketball thing. It this is it's so random and so fun. This guy, he's 70 years old. And people can look this up. It's like called Dairy with a D, not Gary, but Dairy, like Dairy's backyard basketball. And he's been doing it for like 30 years. And he went to Baylor and there's like all these ex college players professional athletes, overseas athletes that come and play basketball in his backyard. And somehow I got connected uh, with this guy. Matter of fact, the guy in the church, in our church, he goes there with his dad has gone for years and he invited me and it's so much fun. It's three on three in his backyard, some of the most random rules and it's an absolute blast. But I also, you know, go to the gym to play too. Yeah. That is so fun. Now we've had, so I've been here three years now, me and Sadie, and we just finished our third year of um, like it's it's rec league basketball. It's not necessarily church league. I just finished church league, church league softball, whatever. But it's mm-hmm. rec league basketball. So it's literally like, I mean, it's 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 pretty, you know, I'll say ghetto if that if I hear you. <laughs> if yeah, I'm allowed to it makes say sense. that. <laughs> so it's pretty. I mean, it's 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 you know, it's pretty rinky dinky. Um, but this so not this past year, two years ago. You know, it's funny. Have you ever seen the movie Kicking and Screaming? No. With Will Ferrell? Oh, yes. Is that the soccer movie? Yeah, it's a soccer movie. Yeah, 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 soccer yeah, yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. So, so basically, he has this like super mediocre team, right? And he gets these two uh-huh. Italian players who like are incredible and they take them to the championship and they win. Uh, at least I think they win in the movie. But we, had, we were a super average team and <laughs> Willie recruited these two high school players to come play with us and they were like incredible. Like one one kid was six eight, the other kid what? was probably six two. Like just freakishly athletic. Um, yeah, we were we we were not the same color. If if just for the sake of the story, and mm-hmm. so it's like this super mediocre team, and then we had these two all star players, and we just absolutely dominated everybody. <laughs> so the whole time it was just like pass the ball to them. Like in the movie, it was like pass the ball to the Italians. Like the whole our whole like our whole. Uh, year was just built on how do we just distribute the ball to these two players and hey it's just you funny. gotta know who you, you you have to know where to send the ball who needs to be scoring who you need to know your role right so you knew 
This is not my time to be shooting threes from half court like Steph. I need to be like Draymond Green and just passing the ball <laughs> over to these players. Oh, so. for sure. But it's like it's 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 so it's just not good for my sanity. Honestly, I just basketball is something because I'm just such a competitive person. Like I mean, it's like we have our like one of our worship leaders plays with us, right? And he got a technical for 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 doing something blatant. And it's just like all of us are like <laughs> super involved in the church. The and worship we're leader. Just like <laughs> we're just getting technical <laughs> fouls. Like it's just like I can't remember. Someone almost got in a fight one time. I actually I almost got in a fight one time. This guy bowed up on me, and I was just like I kind of said something back to him, and it was just, it was just not a uh, it was not a good situation. So needless to say. Playing rec league basketball for me is not the most sanctifying thing that I've uh, that I've gotten to well, do, but I want to get better at it. It's probably the thing you need to continue to do so that you can continue to kill your flesh, right? Back to the 4-8 podcast. Here we are, 4-8 men podcast. You got to keep on doing it so you can be like, you know what? That's true. I'm not I've, as patient as I thought I was. I know. I'm not I've as Christ-like growth. as I thought I was. I've seen growth. It's, it's, it's definitely a humbling thing. I'm like, if, if I'm out here losing to like 15 and 16 year olds, I had this kid one time, Ooh. it was like, we were playing this high school team and this kid was saying something, whatever. And then he was like, bro, you're like 25. <laughs> and it made me, so, <laughs> it made me so bad. Oh, it made me so mad, but it is, it's humbling. It, it, I definitely struggle with, yeah, I can struggle with anger and patience and pride and all those things. And and playing rec league basketball just for a little small town, it, def- it definitely helps keep you grounded and keeps you humble. I only get to that point when our team is not playing well. And I'm like, fellas, we're not giving max effort. So I'm out there because I, I love it. I love playing. I what, this is really the only time, in all honesty, that I feel like my brain is fully clear. Other than when I come on, maybe on vacation, but I'd even take some time to kind of, you know, decompress. But when I am playing, not just pickup basketball, but even more so like in a league and there's like refs and a shot clock, I don't know what it is, man. My brain just gets so clear. I'm not thinking about life and issues and stuff and whatever. I can just kind of lock in. So... I'm no longer, I am I the best. I mean, the league I am in, there's a lot of guys that, you know, they, they've been going for a while and they can, they can hoop and a number of them played in college. And again, I, I played in college, but I played in college so long ago. So I don't have it like I used to have it at all. But my, my, uh, I, I love being out there. It feels freeing. I tell Onika, my wife, I'm like, honey, you got to let me keep going. And I got a, I had a terrible injury, random. Um, went down, guys going on the fast break. I go to, um, I kind of faint at him. Like I'm going to, you know, go at the ball to try to kind of get him to mess up his timing. And then I back away. So I kind of throw him off a little bit. He goes for the layup and brings his hand down and hits me right below my left eye honestly just with his fingers and maybe and poked me in the eye a little bit and it it hurt and I went to the ground and it ended up being the most random injury I've ever had I had to go to the uh, emergency room um my face was numb the left side of my face was numb for six months I ended up being rushed to the ER because when they scanned my brain there was a little bit of blood they saw on my brain and it was from just this random hit to my face, not even with a fist. It was, his hand was open. So that's a long story. You know, I saw, I don't even know how I got off on that, but my that wife crazy. I, I was saying, yeah, she didn't want me to play anymore. She was like, honey, I don't want you playing. And I'm like, honey, I can't end like that. I'm sorry. I'm not ending my basketball career. I'm not going out like that. Some random, <laughs> random injury. So I did take the time off, you know, while my face was, I was getting feeling back to my face. Uh, and then I uh, went back to the league, but I'm not playing in it now. It's on Tuesday nights because my middle son has football, middle school football on Tuesday nights. So I got to be there uh, and excited to be there to cheer him on. There you go. That's awesome. Was uh, was Anika coming to your to your basketball games? 
She has not come to one <laughs> basketball game. She no. does not cheer me on at all. <laughs> she goes, she prays for me before I leave. Lord, I pray protection over my husband. I'm like, honey, I don't want you just praying protection. Pray that I ball out. Thank you. Pray that I just, I crush everyone. So just, now she's like, just imagine how, me. just imagine how much better you'd, you'd, you'd play if, if, if she was in the stands. Thank you. I'm telling her that I brought my, tell one son, my son one time and, um, and, he had a good time. He he had a good time, and I brought my oldest son once. But again, no nobody cares in the family. They they just they just love me for my hugs. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> that. That is so awesome. Well, as you just mentioned, you know, you played you played growing up, and you you played in in college and throughout. And um, you kind of just shared a little bit about you know with refs and a clock and how just those moments like that, you kind of just it clears your head. You don't you're not thinking about you know, work or, or, or all these other things, what other, what other ways do you feel like, you know, growing up playing sports and even just now getting to go do things like that just from an exercise standpoint, how do you feel like just being in that environment impacts you spiritually and, and helps your faith? Oh man, honestly, I, I feel like without that expression of like physical activity, I don't think I'm at my healthiest. And, but I'll say this. I'm realizing it's a little, a little bit more of an idol than I than I would want it to. I want to admit that it is because right now, as we speak, I actually hurt my back. My my, uh, I tweaked my back. So I, we had gone on this trip to South Africa. My wife and I. She was speaking, so I went there just to be a support. Um, and loved cheering her on. It was amazing going to South Africa you know, long flights, like 15, 17 hours or something like that. So I came back, you know, my back was hurting a little bit. And then I did, but I just kept on working out. We worked out the whole time we were there, worked out when we got back. And I, one day I was like, man, I need to do a killer workout. I just want to like, I want to crush it. So I just did like a hit workout in the gym, you know, music blasting. I'm just getting after it. Right. I don't need anybody in there. I'm just, I'm just going to crush my body right here, beat my body, make it my slave. So after I have preached to others, I myself may not be disqualified, right? You know, I'm just like, uh -huh. I've got it in my head. I'm getting after it. Loved it. Well, I didn't stretch beforehand. I didn't stretch after. And I think the 17 hour flight with that workout, I just am like, Ooh, it is hurting. And then we just had, you know, some craziness this past uh, weekend that we were talking about with a car accident with our son. So I think I probably got some stress from that too. So my back right now is like one side of it. It's just one side. It's got a tight fist and it's like, Earl, I own you. Earl, you ain't doing nothing. Earl, you're a punk. That's what you are, Earl. That's what I feel like my back is saying to me right now. So... I'm on my knees this morning and I'm like, Lord, you know how much I love exercise. I need this for my mental health. Like I need this for my spiritual health. I feel like this pushes me forward. I'm a, I'm a better husband. I'm a better father. I'm a better leader. I'm a better friend. My mind is clearer. I just, I feel better. And I'm on my knees this morning and I'm like, Lord, what if it stays like this? I know you can heal me because you can do anything because you're God, right? God, you can heal. You can restore. You can put my back back to order right now. But well, what if you don't? Huh? Well, you're still good. You're still faithful. I still love you. You still love me, more importantly. And I'll just have to recognize that my hope and my dependency is not on my physical fitness. It's in you. So that's where I'm at like today, man. Today, that's where, that's where I am. When medical need comes up, the last thing we want to worry about is how we're going to pay for it. I've had many unexpected medical bills in the past through honey going to the doctor, through me going to the doctor. I've had no surgery in middle school. So many things that I've had to pay that I was unexpected. And I'm sure you've been in, in a similar situation before. And that's where Samaritan Ministries comes in. Samaritan Ministries is a community of Christians paying each other's medical bills. This is not insurance, but it's assurance. 
that you're part of a healthcare sharing community where members care for one another spiritually and financially when a medical need arises. So here's how it works. You can join anytime. Your medical bills are sent to Samaritan Ministries and they notify fellow members to pray for you and send money directly to you for your shareable bills. Your medical bills get paid and you'll find comfort in prayers and encouragement from fellow members. And when another member has a need, you'll do the same for them. This isn't a faceless company. It's an opportunity for ministry. And what I also love so much about Samaritan Ministries is that when a medical emergency arises, you don't have to give a second thought to whether the hospital is a network. Samaritan Ministries has no network restrictions, so you have total freedom to choose whatever doctors, hospitals, and treatments are best for you and your family. And members also get access to exclusive health resources to help keep medical costs low. Samaritan Ministries is a biblical solution to healthcare where we can bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And what I love too is that it's affordable. They're not doing it for profit, but this is their form of ministry. But you don't have to just take my word for it. Join 80,000 Christian households across the nation sharing $30 million in medical needs every month. Become part of this community today at SamaritanMinistries.org slash Huff. That's SamaritanMinistries.org slash Huff. Go join today. That's so good. No, I, I mean... <clears throat> I completely relate to that. I I struggle with those things all the time, you know, and, and that's that's cool that you had that, I don't want to say epiphany, but you, you kind of felt mm-hmm. that the morning of that you're doing this podcast, which is kind of built around physical fitness and things, you know. Yeah. Because um, that's what it is, right? It's like if 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 you if you love to exercise, because cause there's there's so many different ways to look at it, right? If if you if you love because for me, exercise, like you said, it's like a release. It's mm. it, it benefits me. You know, it's a, something I can go do that I feel like I'm a better husband, better father, better friend, whatever. But then, you know, you can get so consumed with the aesthetic side of it. And I talk about that all the time on, on my podcast. It's like if you train solely to look good, then it's not only are you going to idolize physical fitness, but you're going to idolize yourself. And not only are yeah. you going to idolize yourself, but you're going to compare like you know, you'll see someone shirtless on Instagram, and you're like, oh my That's gosh, right. they have a six pack. It's like, well, they might. Yeah work out five hours a day and eat yeah, that's right. perfect little yeah. meals and just be miserable. So it's like you, there, yeah. there's a give and a take with everything, right? So there's there's just so many idolizing things in it. And that's what's cool about, I don't want to say that's cool, that's what's cool about, about my podcast, but like that's what I'm trying to do. It's like, <laughs> how, you know, like I'm just trying to break that barrier of like, you know, you can physically train, but it doesn't have to just solely be on how to just look good at the beach and and just, you know, you know, you have a six pack, whatever, like there's so many other implications that can do. And for me, it's like, yeah, it's so much more important to, to have something like that. That's a hobby. That's a, that's something that you enjoy doing that benefits yeah. you spiritually and, and relationally and, and, and all these other things. And for sure. Um, but yeah, but even, but even in that, like you said, even that can become an idol. It was like, if you it, feel it like, can, if you feel like you need this specific thing, to be a better husband and a father, then it's like, well, like, like you said, if that's taken away from you, are yeah. you so solely dependent on that that you can't be those things without this? You know, that's right. Never really mm-hmm. thought about it like that. That's interesting because I have thought about it like if I get like after Sid had a baby, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't work out for two weeks. But it's like, but it's not about that. Like I need to be here serving. It's not like let me just yeah, go. Yeah, that's right. You know, so <laughs> you're not that much of a meathead. Yeah, no, trust me, I'm not. <laughs> Hey, you just gave birth, honey. Listen, <laughs> I, I got to go get a quick workout. In. Let me go get a quick pump. <laughs> that would not have ended well for the. That would not have, honey. What What do you think, honey? What do you th- What do you th- look, look Look at these triceps, yeah. honey. What what do, what do you think? Yeah, watch <laughs> me pick like, up a daughter. Watch me pick up our daughter and flex <laughs> and flex my biceps. I can squat my daughter right now. <laughs> I can squat, honey. I'll do it right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so funny. But no, it's so true. It's like, yeah, we can, you know, I mean, an idol is just simply what do you think about or desire more than you do God? And and it can be yeah. so many things. Like it's I'm telling it's you, crazy. It's you know, it's and it's and it happens slowly too. It's it's crazy. And you don't know that it's an idol until it's taken away sometimes. Yeah. Or God asks you to lay it down. And if there's anything in our life that if God asks us to lay it down and we wouldn't, then we go, Oh, th- this is a, this is a problem here. Uh, I've been on this. Our, our church is in the middle of some beautiful, exciting times. I'm just honored to even be a part of it. Uh, but we've got some buildings and some stuff and some things that are happening. And it, it's just, it's miraculous and wonderful, but I felt God challenge me. Uh, to do this thing and I'm even hesitant to share it, but I'll just throw it out there and we can edit it later if we need to, if it doesn't come out right. But I, I felt God challenge me 
um, in order to see something you've never seen, do something you've never done. And uh, the challenge I felt, again, this is just personal from God, was for 183 days. That's from July 1st to the end of the year. Every day, I'm going to do four things. I'm praying every day. In my Bible every day. I'm giving an offering every day. And I'm working out every day. Those are the four things. Prayer, Bible, offering, working out. And so I, I have not missed a day. I'm on like a day, I don't know, 80 something. Yeah. I've not, I have not missed a day. Well, now my back's injured. So I'm like, shoot, what am I going to do? Because I never considered stretching, working out, you know, um, that's for suckers. So just kidding. Uh, I am trying to figure out like, okay, is my hope and my dependence, was, am I doing this now to obey God, to honor him, some, a challenge that he put in front of me? Or am I doing this to try to earn something from God? Because it's not, it was never to be something to earn from God. It was to, for me to lean in. And honestly, I think God was helping to prepare me even for what we just navigated this past weekend with the accident with our son, uh, because I have been very sp built up, you know, spiritually. I, I feel like I feel really leaned in to God, to my relationship with God. My heart feels very, very connected and sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Bible is coming alive and it's, Again, I'm not perfect still. I still have, you know, temptations and struggles and shortcomings and, you know, all of that stuff. But just staying like locked in every day. Even when we we're coming back from South Africa, I was like, oh my gosh, we were at church all day. Then we had to get ready to get on an airplane. I just, I did push ups and squats in the bathroom before I took my, you know, took my shower before we hopped on the plane. Like I've been like, I am doing this thing. Uh, but now, What's my hope in? Yeah. Is my hope in my behavior? Is my hope, is my hope in, um, just even my obedience or is my hope still in Jesus Christ, his finished work, his grace, and everything I'm doing is in response to that. And I cannot earn anything from God. I am now just faithfully pursuing him because he pursued me first. I don't even know if any of that makes sense, but no, that made complete that's kind sense. of where I'm at. No, I love that. Yeah, I, I want to I want to circle back and, and ask a question. But I had this hype. I had this image of you in South Africa in like a little bathroom stall doing like weighted or doing like seated dips on the on the toilet, <laughs> like just to get your little exercise in. Oh, that's just funny. Um, well, you know, it so was, those, the bathroom was small. The yeah, bathroom yeah. was small. Uh huh. Well, those so so those four things you said. So when you say, you know, give an offering, because I think especially church culture and just people, you know, you, you specifically tie offering with finances, right? With giving money. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So when you say give an offering, what, cause that can mean a plethora of things. So can you yeah, kind of elaborate yeah. on that a little yeah, bit? Yeah. For that one, for me, it was specifically monetary. So every day I get on our Shoreline City app and I give, I've given something every single day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, separate from like our tithe, you know, we are, you know, that first 10%, we already, you know, we already do that. We have some other missions, organizations and things that we support too. But, but as far as specifically, I've been giving money now, like right now I'm in a flow and this, I'm probably giving way too much information here. You're not supposed to tell this stuff. I think Jesus is like, don't let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. So Lord, forgive me, but I'm, we're just talking here. Uh, so this week I was like, or last week and this week, it's just been like $1, then $2 and $3 and $4 and $5 and $6 and $7. Something that simple. It's, it's been that the last couple of weeks before that, the 70 days before that, it just would be whatever number I felt God put on my heart for that day. I just been like trying to obey because we're in a season of believing God for more money than we've ever needed before as a church. And I felt like this was his challenge to me personally to make sure we are continuing to lead the way with sacri sacrificial giving and obedience. So um, I've done this every day, man. Again, yeah. I, I I love to tell you, 
oh man, I, I don't, I'm not the one that believes you give God a dollar and you know, you get a thousand dollars back. You know, I don't think it works that way. No, um, it doesn't. I'm given a dollar because God is already, God gave me the dollar in the first place, you know? So yeah. everything I do is a response to his grace, but I did feel, no, these four things be in your word, be on your knees, give this offering because your heart follows your money. It just does. Jesus said that. So yeah. I think that's what God was wanting me to do to make sure my heart stays kingdom minded and my heart does not get, begin to focus on, oh, we need this money as a church. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? It's like, oh no, it all belongs to God anyway. I'm kingdom minded. I'm not, I'm not trying to grasp for anything. I'm thinking about him and his kingdom first. And then the working out, I just think was that, that physical piece because I did not want to be a pastor. And I've heard this too many times from pastors that are trying to do, uh, things that are bigger than them. And I think this happens with not just pastors, but people when they're trying to do things that are bigger than them, uh, you get so caught up in it. And when you get to the finish line, you're exhausted and you're like depleted and you weren't a good husband and you weren't a good father. You weren't a good leader the whole time through. And I thought God was giving me this challenge specifically to make sure my heart stays pure. That's what the prayer, the Bible study, that sanctification, that molding that could only come, you know, from God's word. And then the working out piece just to stay really, really healthy. So we get to the finish line of this. I'm running through it with joy and I'm not coming to it beaten down, busted up, broken down on the side of the road. Yeah, that's so good. Well, I, I do want to talk about joy because, um, you know, if, if, if you're even just watching this podcast, you have such like an infectious, just joy about you. And you really are like the most just genuine, like nice, nicest people I've, I've encountered, <laughs> which you is just awesome. Kind. No, you, it, you really, you're just so just like, just life giving. Have you, is that something that maybe, you know, I, I don't really know your full your full story of, of when you became a believer, um, but is that something that you can kind of pinpoint to, you know, specifically joy in the Lord, or is that just kind of your personality, wow. or have you always been? Um, That's a great question. That kind man. of personality. You know, to kind of think back on that, I do think God wired me for sure to be a half full kind of person rather than a, you know glasses half full rather than the glasses half empty kind of a person. So without a doubt, I think I have a wiring. Um, I do think life, like all of us, tries to kill the joy that is present in our, our relationship with Jesus. And there is so much difficulty and pain, and I've navigated it just like you've navigated it, and everybody's got to fight their demons. I don't care who you are. And I gave my heart to Christ when I was really young. But I still had stuff to fight through, whether it was pornography that I brought on myself or it was my dad not being around and needing to work through those identity things to, you know, the poverty situation that we were raised in, which I didn't totally know I was poor until you got around people that had money. You're like, oh, dang, we were broke. Uh, <laughs> so, you, you know, you, you have different scenarios that you navigate and walk through, but but my mom, I know, prayed for me. I know there's other individuals that prayed for me. And um, I would, without a doubt, believe it's been a work of the Holy Spirit in my life to make sure uh, I don't just look at my circumstances to be my litmus test on whether or not I'm going to walk with joy. Because my circumstances have, shoot, even right now, they're not even the best. You know, I'm talking to you and my back's like, like I said, just punching me like, Earl, I got you. You better shut your mouth. You better shut, shut it down, Earl. But this morning, I was just telling Onika, telling my wife, I'm like, honey, I'm going to choose joy today. I'm choosing it. Look what I can do. So gratitude was really just helping me, just being intentional with that. Intentional with like, man, I can still talk. Man, I could still see. Man, I could still hear. Man, I could still feel. Man, at least I can get up out of the bed. Hey, at least I can walk. And as I began to say these things, it's just reminding my mind, reminding my soul who is in charge. But you got to make a choice with that. I think I could be a miserable person. Uh, I think I could be really, really, you know, rude, mean, uh, cynical, nasty. I think I totally could be. 
Um, but by God's grace, he gave me the best wife on the planet who I've been in an incubator of encouragement for 26 years of marriage. She's the best. Uh, but also, um, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what the scriptures teach us. Uh, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy. Wow. Joy second on that list. These are not things that we're grasping for. These are things that are our, 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 our identity in Christ. So, uh, I don't just rely on my feelings for this stuff. I rely on the work of the Holy Spirit in me to continue to shape me and mold me so I can look like Jesus. Jesus had kids running up to him. Most mean people don't. So I think there was something that Jesus had on him and that he was exuding that, that drew people to him. So I'm, I'm, I used to be uh, a little bit ashamed of how I feel God made me and how I flow. And then I was like, forget this. I, why do I don't want to be miserable and I'm not trying to live my life for the glory of anybody else. When you look at a flower, it does not wrestle with who it's supposed to be. It just like grows into it. And I just want to grow into it, right? I just want to be who God has called me to be full bloom, baby <laughs> saying, God, you know, let me shine your glory. Let me, let me bring hope and life to other people. You've given me so much hope and life. So the finished work of the cross has transformed me so much from the inside out that I want to share that with people. Um, obviously I have bad days. Should I have one yesterday? I was like, dang. I'm aggravated. My wife was asking me about my back. I'm like, man, honey, I can't tell you how frustrated I am right now. And the pain's not even high. It's just that I can't do what I want to do. And it's just like, ugh, it is frustrating me so much right now. Well, what am I going to focus on? My frustration or that God, all the beautiful blessings that God has given me. And I just, you know, I've been trying to make some different choices, man. If you follow me on social media, or if you've been following along with this podcast, even you've heard me talk about AG1. AG1 is something that I drink literally every morning. I love to drink it before I go to the gym. And if I skip a day at the gym, I still love to drink it every morning. And what I also love about it is that I'm a, I can travel with it. Me and my wife travel a lot of different places. And there are so many times where I need health and nutrition on the go because a lot of these places we go, they have nothing to offer. So I love bringing my travel packs with me when I travel for the AG1. And there's so many benefits that it gives me. I feel like it gives me better mood. It gives me more energy. It helps with my gut health and my immune system. And not only that, I love the taste of it. And like I said, it gives me so many health benefits. And I feel like it even makes me stronger in the gym. It helps with my cardio, my endurance. And those are just things that I feel like it benefits me in. And other things that I've tried like AG1 just do not taste near as good. And like I said, AG1 is the best foundational nutritional product I've ever tried. And I think it tastes delicious. It's not chalky. It's super smooth and it mixes up super well in the shaker bottle that you get. And like I said, it's just one of my favorite things. And I started taking it because I don't like taking pills. I don't like taking vitamins. And like I said, I wanted to drink something in the morning because that tasted fresh, tasted healthy and gave me the energy that I needed for my workouts. And I just love the taste of it. So I've been drinking it for a while now and I've ditched all the other pills and vitamins that I was taking before. AG1 was designed with ease of mind so that you can live healthier and better without having to do a lot. It's seriously the healthiest thing that you can do in just under a minute. So I take a bunch of different things when you can just mix one scoop and a cup of water each day. And not only do I love to take it, I've gotten so many people on it. I've gotten John David from the Duck Call Room on it. I've gotten some of my neighbors on it. My parents are on it. My brother, uh, my in-laws. I've gotten so many people in the family to take it and try it and they love it. Um, and like I said, it's become such an easy thing. Uh, I got them to travel with it. You have the little travel pack so you can just take with you. They can fit an adopt kit in your backpack, in your suitcase, wherever they can fit anywhere. Super small. And you have the health on the go, like I said. And I've been having people in my family been doing that because they need health on the go just like I do. So if you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash huff. That's drinkag1.com slash huff. Go check it out. Yeah, that's so good. It's like a, it's like a forced fast. <laughs> it is, man. It's a forced it fast. It is. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Well, I love, I love because it really is so true. Like, yeah, if Jesus had this mean spirit, <clears throat> these kids would be running up to him, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And I was going to want to talk to you about about your passion message that that you spoke at that you didn't in, in this past year at Passion. 
because you also talk about the scripture in Luke where he's talking to the Pharisees and, and that he says, go tell that fox talking about Herod. Um, so it's like he exudes so much of that, like that, you know, that genuineness and just that mm-hmm, approachability. Mm-hmm. But then there's also like a, for, like a ferocity to it too. Exactly. Um, it's yep. just, it, it really is a, it's an interesting dynamic. I would have loved to have seen it play out in person 2000 years ago. Yeah, I, I would have loved it too. But I think you're doing that, man. I think you're you're living your life that way. Look at you with your wife. Look at you with your 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 girls. She's so kind, loving, leaned in. Then look at you on the basketball court. Maybe you've gone too far. You know, has it been always has it been Christ like? But but on the basketball court, there's something that comes out of you. But let's go be on the basketball court. Let's go to this podcast. Why are you doing it? You're doing it to help people. You're doing it to kick down walls. You're doing it to tear down strongholds. You're doing it to push people forward. You're doing it to help men look like Jesus and walk like Jesus because we have a world that is trying to shape their identity and tell them they're one thing. And you're like, man, let me help you understand what it means to be a man of God. Not that I have it all together, but let's, let's go on this journey to go on this journey together. So you, you've already got it. You're, you're, you're living it. Uh, in a, in a powerful way. And I, I want to be a man like that, right? I want to be like, shoot, this dude, my wife was going to get her lashes done, you know, cause ladies got to get their lashes done. I, I didn't know this was a thing, you know, right? So she's got to get eyelashes, like extensions or something. Cause she has like tiny lashes. She tries to say cause she's Asian. Uh, um, but it's not, she's not Asian. We already did the DNA test. She's not, you know, she's like Nigerian or something. So, (laughs) but she's been, she's been telling me she's Asian since we're in college. I'm like, honey, you're not Asian. You're black. Okay. You're all the way black. You're, you're blackity black. And (laughs) she's like, oh, I love being black, but I'm, I'm Blasian. I got some Asian in me. So we did the DNA test. She doesn't. But anyway, she goes to get her lashes done and she tells me some guy, is yelling at her while she is kind of walking to her appointment. She calls me and tells me this. Well, it's time to roll out. You know, we're, 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 I love Jesus. I start driving there and I'm like, oh shoot, Earl, what are you going to do? You're a pastor. You can't just like go and, Hey mother, you know, I mean, what, what, what am I, what am I going to do here? So I, I called a couple of guys and I was like, Hey, this just happened. Onika is scared. I'm heading there now. This one dude who was a cop. He's on our security team. I'm like, tell me, what do I need to be thinking about? He goes, well, just so you know, you can't say like, I'll kill you. Cause that's like a felony. You know, I don't know if you know that. <laughs> you can't, that's good to there's know. certain things you can't say. That's like a terrorist threat or something like that. So I got, I'm not going to be like, Jesus loves you. No, that's not the time for that. Um, I'll tell him that on Sunday when I get there, I'm ready to. I'm ready to throw hands, right? So that that's what rose up on the inside of me. I don't think God wants that to go away. Now, the problem is when we just direct that at people and it's only for our selfish you know, gain, obviously I'm, I'm there trying to protect my wife and everything turned out just fine. We knocked on the dude's door. He opened it up and um, no, we, nobody threw any blows. And he was a punk anyway, in all honesty. When he opened up the door, I was like, man, if I beat this dude down, it's it's not even going to be right. You know, <laughs> I mean, I, I get no street cred for this guy. I need somebody like six, eight, you know, in order to get some legitimate street cred. <laughs> this this guy, this guy's a straight up wuss. So I apologize. Obviously, I've not forgiven him totally like I need to. So Lord, work on my heart and get me clean from the inside out because that is God's son. And I should not be calling him that because God has a plan and a purpose for his life. But he should have disrespected my wife. Anyway, I'm feeling like I got the fire and I got the kindness. And I don't think we're supposed to lose that piece. I think that's how we were we were made. I think we get to step into our purpose and our destiny that way. And just hopefully we understand that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly realms so that we don't direct any anger just towards people, right? That we're also making sure we remember what this battle really is all about. Yeah, for sure. Well, and I, you, you said it a couple of minutes ago, but no, thank you for that encouragement. That really, that really means a lot. Cause that's, I mean, 
you know, part of also too, like there, there also is a capability that as a man, as a husband, as a father, you do want to, you know, have some control over, right? So I'm like, mm-hmm. if I'm qualified and strong, like to some extent, there is a protection element of like, if something happens, like I'm able to, you know, yeah. help my family. It's like, I, I don't, I don't weigh a buck 40 and I just, you know, get my brain yep. hit and I can actually defend yeah, myself. That's right. Um, mm-hmm. but no, I mean, we, we went to Disney world, you know, last weekend and we've gotten so much hate for going to Disney world for whatever. Uh, just obviously all the things Disney supports, whatever, but, uh, is that why really? Oh, it's, it's just, it's freaking ridiculous. <laughs> oh it's, my goodness. But I'm like, I had typed out this thing. I was like, please just let me post this on my story and say, like, you cannot post it because you know, obviously before me and Sadie met, I was not famous or well-known or whatever. So I could just, you know, post whatever I wanted to post or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but now I I don't have the luxury of doing that. But I was like, I had this thing typed out. I was like, you type out hate for us about going to Disney on your quote unquote iPhone, uh, scrolling quote unquote Instagram, yeah. wearing your mm-hmm. quote unquote Nikes, debating yeah. on what show you want to watch on quote unquote Netflix. I was like, yeah. just get out of here. Like freaking exactly. Disney, Disney owns ESPN, ABC, Marvel, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Star Wars, yep. Indiana yep. Jones. I'm like, so you're telling me like, it's just, it's, it's so great. So I felt that this past week and I was like, oh my, there's so much just like, I'm like, we went to Disney world because our two year old likes princesses. Like, give exactly. me, give me that's a break. Right. <laughs> give me a break whatever but moving on just because you know i felt that this past week and i was like oh my gosh there's just there's something stirring within me that needs to be tamed to some extent or i'm just gonna lose my mind um, <laughs> no but don't lose that man i feel like that's good i feel like that's part of the process and the journey i think god gave that to you he wired us that way uh as men shoot in all honesty i think women have that edge too go let let somebody come after your girl's and oh, watch yeah. how Sadie responds, right? She's not like, oh, I'm just a little quiet. You, just got, you can say whatever you want to to my daughter. It's just like, shoot, I've seen my wife step up, right? And she's sweet and she's kind and she's loving, but step to her. With, uh, go yeah. against her kids and she just something rises up. But I think, man, we got to be okay with that piece of it. Uh, I think God wired us that way. I just think we can't find our identity in our toughness. Yeah. Our identity is still found in Christ. Yeah. Our identity is not in how many pull-ups we can do. Our identity is still found in Christ. But I really want to, I want to be able to do as many pull-ups as I possibly can because there's nothing like a pull-up to separate the men from the boys. And we yeah. all know this. So, and I'm not talking about chin-ups. I'm talking about pull-ups. Pull ups. Okay. I'm talking, I'm talking about wide grip too. So uh, I, I want us to be able to do all of those things, push, be strong, but my identity is not in that. Yeah. My so identity good. is in, this is who Jesus called me to be. Now I want to maximize what he gave me. If he gave me fight, I want to maximize it and just make sure it's surrendered to him and holy. And if he, ma- if he gave me kindness, then let me maximize that. He gave me joy. Let me maximize. He gave me ability to strategize. Let me maximize all of this for his cause and his glory, not to make me famous, but to make his name uh, famous, if you will, or to advance his kingdom on the earth. Yeah, that's so good. Because we all do have like, you know, some sense of justice within us, right? There's there's mm-hmm. some sense of when you see injustice, there is something in you that, you know, whether that that's not fair or whatever, like, there is something wired in all of us that to some extent gets fired up about injustices in the world yeah. for sure. Well, I want, I want to talk to you about this because, um, you know, I, I loved the, the message that you gave this past year at Passion. Um, Thanks, man. I said that earlier, but what's this for you personally and even just for people listening and even just to, to maybe encourage or even just kind of shed some light on it. What do you feel like, well, one, was there a moment in your life where you went from I'm following Jesus, I'm a believer to that, I'm with you heart and soul, right? Because there is a, you know, there is a, mm. I go to church on Sunday, but then there is a a level deeper than that of, no, I'm actually with you heart and soul. Was was there a moment nah, for you where you kind of yeah. switched that mindset or you feel like the spirit kind of did something in you that you yep. really had that illuminated? Totally. I remember this. I don't, can't tell you the date. I was in college and I was in student leadership and, uh, we're in this like worship service and, um, all crying out to God. And my brain 
starts drifting, starts thinking about eternity. It starts thinking about like, wait, forever? Like, okay, wait, a thousand years. And then there's more. Wait, 10,000 years. Wait, and then there's more. Like, wait, it just goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And I found myself going like, this seems crazy. Maybe even, I would say doubting, you know, some like, I I can't wrap my brain around this forever eternity concept. And and, and the message, I don't even think it was on eternity, but I'm just kind of having this random wrestling moment during this worship service. And Christian, I still remember it, man. I just remember some fire. Uh, Maybe I'll say it was the gift of faith rising up in me in this moment. And I remember saying over and over again, it started off as a whisper. I'll preach this gospel till I die or it kills me. I'll preach this gospel till I die or it kills me. I'll preach this gospel till I die or it kills me. And I just keep, that just keeps coming up in my heart over and over again. And I think at that point in time, there was, it, it, it was a shift, you know, for me. I think I followed Jesus. I love Jesus. Again, I was in student leadership. I was going to church. You know, I was trying to, you know, do the right things. Life, again, not perfect at all, but, you know, really trying to point the right direction. But it was in that moment, it may have been, maybe my freshman, sophomore year of college, that it was just that shift. And sometimes I can feel doubts come my way at certain times and my brain can go back to that moment. And I'm like, I'll preach this gospel till I die or it kills me. That's where I'm at. I'm already dead. So you can't have my life. And I'm not trying to be too dramatic and I'm not trying to be too crazy. But I feel like there's a little bit of crazy that we need in us in order to really live our lives for the cause of Jesus Christ and be like, hey, Lord, I'm with you, heart and soul. So I apologize. My eyes started getting crazy because I started feeling some some passion bubbling up on the inside of me right here, man. No, I love that. I love that. You need to you need to get that tattooed somewhere on your body. <laughs> it's already on my thighs. Is it really? I was going to ask. <laughs> no, I was no, going to say not. you need to get an inner tie that. An inner, an inner tie that. Oh, that is so awesome. But no, that's so true because, like, there really is. Um, you know, I think there is a moment where, like, because there's something that's also birthed out of that idea, right? There is an obedience to it. There is a repentance to it. it, it there, it you kind of move out of that whimsical, like I'm, I'm all in, but, mm-hmm. but then again, you know, there, there are things that happen, you know, because I feel like a year and a half ago, I would have said, I'm, I'm with you heart and soul. And then here I am with our daughter with a super traumatic situation. And then I'm doubting, you mm-hmm. know, God's goodness. And a few weeks ago, I did a podcast with Matt Chandler, just talking about God's sovereignty in the midst of difficult circumstances. Cause mm-hmm. for me, and this is something I really do wrestle with. It's like, you know, we talked about Job one and two, where there's like a heavenly court and Satan's there, and it's just super weird yeah. dynamic of like God's allowing things to happen, but Satan's yeah. causing it. But it's like, so, so the things I wrestle with it, at times, it's like I can get and God's mad even at, suggesting it. God's yeah, like, hey, have it's you considered weird, you know? Job? Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. I'll get to a point where like I don't even get mad at the devil anymore because I'm like, well, God's allowing him to do it. That's but then right. it's like, yeah. but then I don't want to, you know, because then there are so many verses of like, you know. <laughs> The, uh, the, the, who's the clay to talk to the potter and then yeah. say, I'll destroy you. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's like, well, I don't want to question you, but like, <laughs> you know, but then, but then does God does honor Job, even though Job was like saying some outlandish things because it was, yeah, he, does. he was talking to it. He was talking to God about it. Right. And yeah. that's, there's things that I wrestle with in that of, of, you know, sovereignty, but like, why are you allowing this to happen? Like, are you mm-hmm. doing, you know, are you allowing this to happen to like teach me a lesson, which I do think that that happens, but it's like, could we not I have maybe you. done something a little lesser, a <laughs> little less yeah. traumatic to teach me patience yep. or something like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, yep. But just, yeah, but I, all that to say, I do think that there is that shift with full on heart and soul. Like I'm with you that, you know, no matter what comes like, and it's easy to say that it's harder to really truly live it out and breathe it. And, and I know that you're kind of in that similar situ- situation now. Yeah. Um, no, you can feel that, man. Even with your wife, right? You get to, you marry her, you're like, oh, I love you. Let's do that. Oh, I love you. I love you. But it gets deeper. Yeah. Right. It gets deeper. You keep on going in it. 
and you go through some stuff and she annoys you, you annoy her, or you I mean, how many guys listening to this, they've had to tell their wives about pornography, they have to tell their wives about, you know, some DM or something like that. And now you have to navigate sin mm -hmm. in the covenant of marriage. And you're trying to be like, Lord, I need you now. And you come through that. And it, there is a heart and soulness, if you yeah. will, that can come to that marriage because you went through some stuff. Uh, there's another word we can use there, you know, instead of stuff, but I don't cuss. So you, you go through those things and it brings you closer together. And I think that happens in our walk with God too. It happens with our boys, you know, the, the brothers that we have, I'm sure the guys you had in your wedding. It's just, you know, you've been through some things. You've had some conversations. You mm -hmm. went to them to a funeral or they, you walked them through a divorce, uh, with the, of their parents or what have you, something like crazy traumatic or sibling, you know, passed away. And you just get, you, you get that heart and soulness by the, by the pressure. And they, that's why that, that crazy scripture in, in, uh, I think it's in Hebrews, you know, that says, you know, Jesus Christ learned obedience through the things that he suffered. And it's, it's just hard, but what, what is it like after a difficult workout that you just crush, right? Or almost crushed you, but you made it through to the other side. You're like, Ugh. you know, there, there's that heart and soulness mm -hmm. that comes, you know, with that. That's so good, man. That's so good. Well, I want to, this is kind of my last thought. I kind of want to talk about for a second, because also in this message, and I, I, it was such a, such an awesome point that, that, that you spoke on, um, but this idea of perhaps, right? There's this idea of, you know, Josh or um, Jonathan's talking to, to, to Jonathan's talking to his armor bearer, mm -hmm. and he says, you know, perhaps God would deliver them into our hands. And just this idea of sometimes, you know, all we may get is a perhaps, um, and we're kind of in a sim we're kind of in a, in a situation where it's like it feels like a perhaps, and I think Sadie's more probably leaning towards like the perhaps side of it. And I'm, all, mm -hmm. I'm leaning more towards like the practicality, like discernment mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of navigate, you know, perhaps the Lord is with us, but then also like discerning, like, is there wisdom in the perhaps? Because perhaps yeah. can mean perhaps <laughs> yes or perhaps no. Like, perhaps no. Yeah, perhaps right. is a, it's a medium. Like, I mean, it's like perhaps like that can mean yes or it can mean no. So how do you, you know, and I think there's like a you know, maybe going deeper than just, I don't, I don't, I don't know if deeper than the spiritual is the right word. Cause spiritually you could just be like, well, just trust and just believe. But I do think no, there's I like a you. practicality standpoint. That's like, no. but sometimes it's like, you know, fine. It's like, you know, taking out a loan, like spending a ton of money. Like there yeah, is, man. there is yeah. difficult things. That's like, okay, well, like I hear the perhaps, but there also is like discernment and wisdom in what we decide to do. So how do you, no, that's it's kind of good, a, a long thing, but how do you navigate that from just a, I actually sense. love that. I think we're going to be talking about some of that stuff on Sunday. I haven't finished my message yet, but you're, you're really talking about wisdom. You know, you're, you're trying to make the wisest choices that you can. And it's so awesome that the Bible has a whole book set aside for this, yeah. right? In, in Proverbs. But there's still, even in Proverbs, there's some scriptures. Ah, man, I wish I could remember. I wish I could read it right now. If I looked it up in my Bible, I, I could get it. There's like, these verses that like say the exact opposite and they're right next to each other. Uh, it's like answer a fool in his folly and he will be wise. And the next one's like, don't answer a fool in his folly. I mean, it's like, oh yeah, yeah. Proverbs 26 verse number four, do not answer a fool according to his folly or you yourself will be just like him. Verse number five, answer a fool in his folly according to his folly or he will be wise in his own eyes. So it's like, sometimes you answer the fool and sometimes you don't answer the fool. Well, when do I know whether or not to answer the fool? It's kind of like you, it's your Instagram post. You got all these fools, excuse me, my mm -hmm. language, uh, saying, hey, this, da, 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 da. you're like, okay, I'm about to answer all of y'all. And Sadie's like, honey, come on. This is not the time to answer a fool in his folly. But there's some other times you might need to step up that perhaps I, I like the wrestle because number one, I feel like it forces us closer to Christ. So I, I think God puts us in situations that aren't clear 
so that we have to lean into him for clarity. So I, I think that's intentional on God's part. And if you think he's being silent, number one, we got the scripture, so he's never really silent. But if you think he's being silent, I think he could be whispering just so you get closer. That's my opinion. Number two, I also think God, we're always concerned about missing God, but I think God is a very big target. So uh, if we have a mindset of, oh, there's just like this tiny little like bullseye And if I don't hit that, I'm missing it. I think it paralyzes us sometimes. So I think the freedom of going, oh man, God gave me the ability to actually make decisions. He, he, he actually gave that to me. It was a gift he put into my hands. So now if my wife's saying one thing and I'm saying another thing, you know, I think we got to get into a place of agreement and that might mean, mean we go slower. We don't make the call yet. Or it might mean that sometimes that she goes, hey, Christian, I just trust you. Go with what you think is right. You're like, I'm about 60, 40 on this. And she's like, hey, I trust you. Go for it. And you got to be willing to, you know, take that step. And there might be some other times you might go, man, honey, I really am unclear on this. I feel like you have some strong clarity and I, I'm leaning in and I'm not really getting that. So I'm, I'm going to trust you on this. I think there's a level of humility and strength that comes there. So trying to remove it from like, oh, just, you know, believe God and everything's going to turn out great. It's like, no, wisdom. No, he does want you to lean into him. No, don't be so afraid that you're going to miss God. And number two, especially with your spouse, alignment and agreement are huge. They are huge, huge, huge in marriage. So for me and my wife, we've got big decisions. I really want to make sure we're in a place of alignment and agreement. If we're not, I'm going to take a step back and pause a little bit more and just pray for God to work on her heart or my heart so that we can be in alignment. But we've had some moments in our marriage that we actually bring to another married couple and we say, we see this wrong. Well, I'm not wrong. We see this differently. You guys get to be our tiebreaker. What you tell us, because you're godly, because you're wise, because you've gone ahead of us, because you've seen this from another perspective, we want y'all to tell us what we need to do in the situation. Here's how I'm seeing it. Here's how Onika is seeing it. And it helps so much to have some outside counsel. So in those, perhaps, I think all of those can be really, really kind of just practical things. This is why being planned in the church, having good people in your life, all that stuff really, really matters uh, because whoever really has your ear has your future. So you want to make sure the right people are speaking into your ear because they're going to help direct where you're going to go. Yeah, that's so good. <clears throat> and there's so much humility in that too. Like, you know, being able to go approach another spouse and share your perspective and have have your wife or your husband or whatever share mm-hmm. share their perspective and you know talk about disagreements and 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 seek counsel. I think um, you know I was someone asked me one time like what's the best trait of a leader and I was just like humility. Like if you yeah man if you're yeah. leading and you don't have humility then you're a ter- you're not a good leader. Like if you yeah. if you can't mess up or if you can't seek you know, guidance from others, then you're, sure. you're not going to be a good leader. And I think, um, that's just something that I think we need to get better at as men is having humility to own our mistakes. And, and when we haven't even made a mistake yet to, to prevent that, you know, seeking wisdom and seeking guidance and, and all those yeah. things. And, uh, I think that's awesome. So that, good, man. That you said that, but no, that's, that's really, that's really good and clear because yeah, it's, it's, you know, two is better than one. Like I think that's what's, what's so awesome mm-hmm. about marriage is, Mm-hmm. You know, you do have a spouse who cares about you deeply and loves you and wants the best for you. Then you like you, you the same to them. And, you know, it, it really is two better than one. Like there's so much, yep. there's so much um, that you can do there just from a advice standpoint and just praying together and, and really seeking, so good. seeking guidance in it. But yeah, it, it, it is, you know, you read that scripture, like perhaps, perhaps the Lord is with us. And if you're the armor bearer, you're like, I mean, bro, like this is... I mean, <laughs> 
I mean, <laughs> my I mean, li- literally, his life is on the line. Yes, I mean, and he, you, like, like you said, he doesn't have a weapon. I'm like, that's right. I'm like, Jonathan, you better be, you better be pretty gifted, boy. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I mean, if I was with David, I'd probably feel a little, a little, a little more peaceful. But you know, Jonathan was, he, he was good enough. But uh, <laughs> I guess so. But you better be like John Wick, right? Yeah, we're walking yeah. into this thing. You yeah. better be able to like handle a gun or the sword, throw hands, yeah, throw a car. Yeah. Wrestle jujitsu, you know, a little bit of all of it. Can you survive 10 stabbings like <laughs> and somehow walk out unscathed? Is, is that possible? Oh, I love it, man. Well, Earl, I'm gonna have to have you back on the podcast because I got so much other stuff to, to talk to you about. And but sadly, we're out of time oh. today. But this was, oh, this man. was, this I was so you even having me. This was so encouraging, man. This was, this was awesome. I love, uh, anytime I get to just chat with you, I'm always encouraged and uplifted and just, um, challenge to be a more joyful person because i struggle hey. with a lot of the things that you said that you don't you don't struggle with so I, I, I'm, I'm happy to happy to be uh just conversing with you and just i'm happy to know you and call you a friend so hey, I'm hey we're in this together you. man i'm cheering you on i appreciate you so much and to all the men that are listening to this it's a huge step to even listen to anything to want to make yourself better so I, I just think that's absolutely phenomenal. Just pray that we don't, again, hang our hats on that and find our identity in that and let pride be our primary marker. You know, pride's such a scary thing because you don't know you have it. Yeah. And everybody else around you, and they're like, man, you're, you're prideful. So that's what, that humility piece, that leadership, and, and you exude that, man. You exude that humility. And anybody listening to this podcast, if they're wanting to be taught anything, grow at all, um, that just speaks to, you know, God gives grace to the humble, right? So I'm praying grace over every single person who's listening to this as they lean in with humility. Yeah, that's awesome. And well, thank you so much. Go, uh, go get that back healed. Yeah, I will, man. I appreciate you so much. I'll see you on the basketball court. Let's do it. Hey, I, I need you to come. <laughs> you need to come help our team out. We're, we've been struggling. <laughs> After I get this back healed, there I'll be go. there, man. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs>